It is Wednesday. It's the 16th of October. I'm Monita Rajpal. This is CNN News Center, live from Hong Kong. Our top stories today. Financial markets in free fall. Banks pushed to the brink of failure and an historic debt default. Those are just some of the nightmarish consequences we could see if U.S. lawmakers fail to raise the debt ceiling in the next few hours. Well, U.S. House Speaker John Boehner is facing criticism that he cannot control members of his own party. Senior White House correspondent Jim Acosta has more now on the wheeling and the dealing to get a deal. Time is running out. The debt ceiling is within sight. And the last best hope of avoiding a potential default once again rests with Senate leaders Harry Reid and Mitch McConnell. Well, Chinese state media has called for a de-Americanized world following the U.S. debt debacle in Washington. China, as we were saying, is the world's largest investor in American public debt. David McKenzie reports now from Beijing. Deal or no deal, with just hours to go to a U.S. default, foreign leaders are getting very nervous in CNN yeah, News Center live from Hong Kong, disarming words as Iran sits down for high-stakes talks with six world powers. Back from warm words to cold, hard facts, negotiations in Geneva are getting down to brass tacks as six world powers work toward a deal to rein in Iran's nuclear ambition. The talks are underway in Geneva right now. In just a moment, we'll be going to Reza Sayah in Tehran for the reaction there. But first, let's take you to a Jim Shuto in Geneva. Jim, so they're talking about these proposals as being very useful. What's it going to take now for them to actually say that they've got a deal? Thank you. Jim Shooter there, live for us uh, from Geneva. Well, let's take you now to Tehran on the other side of the argument there and the view from uh, how things are playing out where you are. Reza? Monita, obviously there's so much at stake for Iran and the Iranian people. When it... All right, Reza, thank you. Reza Sayah there, live for us from Tehran. You are watching CNN News Center live from Hong Kong. You are watching a, an extended edition of CNN News Central live from Hong Kong. I'm Monita Rajpal. A deadly typhoon is hammering Japan, setting off landslides that have crushed houses in the southeast part of the country. At least 17 people were killed after Wipa blew in from the Pacific. The island of Oshima, south of Tokyo, took the brunt of the storm, blocked roads, or making it hard for rescue workers to reach people in places hit by landslides. More than 500 domestic and international flights have been canceled. Well, let's get more now on this typhoon and uh, another storm brewing in the Western Pacific. Meteorologist Mary Ramos is at the World Weather Center. It is a busy part of the world there, uh, Mari. <laughs> Very busy indeed. Uh, and I'm going to talk about that in just a moment, Monita. Just hold on for a second. Part of the world, Monita. Wow. All right, Mari. Thank you very much for that. Let's uh, bring you up to date on some of the other stories that we're following for you here at CNN News Center. There are reports that 21 people have been killed in Dara in Syria. The London-based Syrian Observatory for Human Rights says an explosive device hit a truck carrying civilians. They were reportedly traveling through an area controlled has risen to at least 127 people after a 7.1 earthquake hit the central Philippines on Tuesday. The tremor struck 600 kilometers south of Manila in Bohol province. Around 180 people were injured in the quake and more than 20 are still missing. Overnight demonstrations turned violent in the streets of Rio de Janeiro in Brazil. Thousands of protesters came out in Rio and also in Sao Paulo to support teachers striking for higher pay and better working conditions. Angry protests broke out at the funeral of a former Nazi SS officer near Rome. Eric Priebke was serving a life sentence under house arrest for his role in the killing of 335 civilians during the Second World War. Police in Los Angeles say they've made an arrest in a bizarre security scare. A man faces a charge of possession of an explosive or destructive device near an aircraft after bombs made of dry ice exploded at Los Angeles International Airport. The suspect is being held on a $1 million bond. Casey Wine reports. Security at Los Angeles International Airport is tied after two bombs. A 28-year-old novelist from New Zealand has become the youngest writer to win the Man Booker Prize for English fiction. Eleanor Catton began writing the book The Luminaries at the age of 25. Judges said the work had astonishing maturity and poise. You are watching CNN News Central live from Hong Kong. Coming up after the break, how the U.S. government shutdown is being felt at military cemeteries across the world.